We love you, Percy! Oh, no! No! Just pumped out. Never celebrate early, kids. <laughs> So we finally made it up to Cooktown. We're about to tackle Cape York. We are packing it in. I, re <laughs> I reckon the, the van's going to be brown and our undies are going to be brown both. So matching undies and van. But that's not where the adventure starts. We're going to take you back a few days to this secret swimming hole we found. It was absolutely amazing. So enjoy, guys. So we're just rolling into a little spot we like to call Cardinal Spa Pools. I'm Cardwell. Not a, Cardwell. We've never been here before, but we like to call it the wrong name normally on spots we've never been to but you wouldn't believe the color of this water it's it's between blue and aqua but it's sort of got a milky tinge to it sort of like you if you leave your milk in the fridge for six weeks too long have a look at it look at that and the best part about it is Got all to ourselves. <laughs> we're in croc country now so every time we get to a little swimming hole like this we make sure we check for all the little signs that say crocs no swimming because if you just miss a sign you could be uh breakfast so yeah and that's not even an exaggeration so <laughs> do you reckon it's going to be cold oh look there's a fish oh there is too it's uh, like a little yeah, slimy white crazy. perch all right sarah's about to do a bommy everyone rate her bommy out of 10 go bommy cop bommy cop <laughs> oh that was <laughs> oh it was... it was really shallow wasn't it are you all right Holy shit, that's funny. Have you bruised your bum? There we have it, folks. Never bommy when you haven't jumped in and checked the depth first. Oh, hey, Sarah. You can see the bottom. That was so stupid. <laughs> to Sarah's defense, though, look, you can't even see the bottom. No, I can. In the spot that I jumped. <laughs> it could have been a big croc in there for all we know. Big salty dingo. Anyway, I'm going in now. So we've been busy all day tightening up all the crucial nuts and bolts underneath the van. I've, I've tampered with the uh, trailing arm suspension because with hybrid caravans and any caravans for that matter, the independent trailing arm suspension is normally the first thing that will rattle loose, either big bolt on the top or the big bolt on the bottom. So I've tightened all them up, my sway bar's tight, I've tightened up all the usual suspects that come loose. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I can take the Gib River Road experience and uh, put it into Cape York. But Apparently, like I said before, it's the worst it's been for a bloody long time and we are towing the van up. But luckily for us, we are joined by an epic group of people. We've got about six or seven vans all up and I'm not going to introduce you guys to them all now. Plenty of time to chat to some of the families while we're up there. But tonight, we're just going to enjoy a few of these, talk a bit of shit around the fire um, and pretty much enjoy before all the carnage happens. <laughs> all right so we're about to head off on pretty much the biggest adventure we're going to tackle all year long hopefully percy and keith hold up to the challenge but i don't know i reckon the old telegraph track is going to throw a massive spanner in that plan so we're going to hit the road we've got an eight car convoy so we're all going to be sitting about a kilometer apart to get out of the dust so it's going to be a long one um i've screwed on the big whip antenna so hopefully we get the range out of the oricon but how exciting is this guys we cannot wait to hit the road <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
going. So we're just dropping our tyres. We've pretty much been on the bitumen for about 50 k's past Cooktown, and then you get through this little river crossing here. Apparently it's gravel after this, so we're dropping down. I've never really done a lot of corrugations with the van, so I'm not sure what pressures to go. I might just start at 35 um, and see how we go after that. But the car, I'm gonna run 25s, and obviously the van's single axle, so everyone's got dual axles with us. So if you've got a single axle, there's more weight over the center point, so you don't drop your tires as much. So yeah, we're just gonna sort of work it out on the fly. Hopefully them pressures get us through, but normally low and slow is my key. I don't know if the camera caught that, but the boys just absolutely stitched all of the girls up. We're all standing there filming the rigs come through the water crossing and they flew through soaking. Keelan came last and I'm like, don't you dare. <laughs> This is at the very start. We've got a bit of a tanker pulled up on the side here, but they reckon it's a bit boggy, so we'll see how we go, but it shouldn't be too bad, I don't oh, think. Oh, easy as, look at that. Yeah, it's, oh, it's just nothing a little actually. puddle. Yeah, give it a bit, come around the truck, Alan. A bit soft, mate. Hi. <laughs> hear that that's the uh, exhaust uh, the dust suppression system working I just checked the van no dust so far it's a good sign but I think I might need to dust that filter out another little new addition is this extended aerial she's a uh, she's a tall one it's about as tall as just vanning its boat so yeah that's getting some really good range but it's annoying because I'm picking up too much we're actually getting the convoys down the road that's not even in our convoy so it's hard to distinguish between um, convoys but at least we can tell they're coming um, but it's working a treat we're at our first stop we're at the historic Laura homestead so we're gonna go in and check out what it's like well, this is definitely up my alley I don't know how much Keelan's gonna enjoy this but it looks pretty cool <laughs> Perfect size building for me. <laughs> it must have been all pretty short back in the day. <laughs> so it's a pretty cool old building, but she's uh, low ceilings on her, but uh, pretty much people come here for the gold rush. So they'd be sifting through these croc infested rivers with a sieve. And then when they ran out of gold and they couldn't find any more, I believe they started um, obviously harvesting cattle and, and breeding up cattle out here. So there would have been a few heifers, a couple bulls getting around these paddocks. Um, it's pretty cool to see and uh, yeah, step back in time for sure. So we've got the big Laura homestead here. And then if you have a look here, we have the Aboriginal station hand. And if you come look out here, it is a little tin shed. That's it. Wow, it's busy. Shocking. This one here was the Aboriginal Station Hand Quarters. So you can see it's very small compared to the rest of the buildings. It's got the three separate rooms, but they're all quite small. So you can imagine how packed it would have been in there. So we just got to the next spot. This called is this spot's called Cow Pow, I think. Cape M Melville National Park. Yeah, and apparently there's Barra here. So I've got the squidgy, bit of a soft plastic. I heard <laughs> these are a good, a little weapon down here. So but they've seen like 40 crocodiles here, and apparently last night people who were camping here they could hear them like barking. So I'm not going near the water. Apparently there's some local down here, and he's in the water. So let's as we go. speak, I can see. Yeah, Danny there's people in the water. water. Let's check. It. Let's check it out. <laughs> Wouldn't believe it. Bloody got snagged first cast, and I've uh, I've buggered myself, lost my lure. Um, now I've got to make the walk back to the car, and there's lizards and snakes and shit everywhere here. I'm just trying not to step in the crocodile poo as I walk back through this little bit of scrub. I think I'm gonna run back to the car and get another lure though.
Derek, mate, what's wrong? Why aren't you oh, up no, by the water? No, 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 Oh Jesus, the crocs are being fed, we'll be right. Go oh, up to the I side. Know, I know. I'm scared of shit. That increases your risk of not getting eaten. Hope you guys are enjoying the video. Uh, if you are, make sure you like and subscribe. It's the easiest way to support us and it keeps us on the road doing what we're doing today. So yeah, if you can, please do that for us. It means a lot. And it really does cost you guys nothing and it means the absolute world to us. So please, all you need to do is hit the like button or jump on your phone and subscribe and it will go a really, really long way. Plus, we're gonna be doing some subscribe. <laughs> Plus, we're going to be doing a subscriber giveaway soon. So if you aren't subscribed, you're definitely going to miss out. We've got some merch and we're going to be flinging some shirts around. So get amongst that, subscribe, back to the video. to Keelan ripping on people with full-size <laughs> caravans. In this episode, we're going to watch a full-size caravan get pinstriped to the shit house while I just squeak down the middle like a hot dog down a hallway. <laughs> Look at this. Nothing. I could lick my finger. <laughs> How good. Last time we were on the Gibb River Road, you guys might have seen it. We had the old 11 foot hybrid van um, and it got absolutely dusted. We came inside and it was just red all over our bed. Check this out. Seriously, it is so bad. Check that dust. That is thick. Ew. This is very good. There's no dust inside the van. Let's have a look in the bathroom. Nah, she's good. Happy chappies. None in the cupboards. Yes. So what I'm doing this afternoon is I'm getting some of our food prepared. We had heaps of people ask us how we manage to do cooking when we're off grid or how we keep all our food fresh and stuff. So I'm quickly going to show you what we did. Basically, I chose nine meals and then we're going to have those nine meals twice. <laughs> so. 
I'll make a big, say, spaghetti bog and then we'll have that for two nights on Cape or a big Mexican rice and we'll have that for two nights. So this afternoon what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook up one meal and then I'm going to freeze that so that when we do the old telly track, when we get in, I can quickly just take that frozen meal out and we can heat it up. But basically how I've planned our stuff is I've used our ebook, the camp cooking one, and I put all of the ingredients into one massive list and then I split it up into like sections so we've bought all of the food and then I've looked at what's going to last the longest and what isn't going to last so things with like heaps of tinned food we'll eat that last and then all of the stuff with fresh veggies we'll eat that first so there's my little tip for planning for your cooking for Cape York but if you do want our camp cooking ebook which is all the recipes that we've used for this next three weeks we'll put the link in the description it's only $9.95 so it's not going to break the bank but it's got everything that we're going to cook on the next three week trip um and yeah makes it super easy for you guys all right so we just got to camp day one in the books um everything went as to plan nothing has broken yet I think Drifting Woods, um, one of their brakes is locked up permanently now. Um, obviously, it's just going to wear the pad out and then just not going to have brakes on that one thing. Um, a few people got a little bit of dust. Sarah just told me, um, I'm sure you guys already know, but we don't have any dust in the van, which is perfect because Urban have actually made that dust suppression system. So this is the first time we've really tested it. They told us it works, but it's all also good to actually know yourself. But um, yeah, check this out for a camp. It's absolutely epic. Got the campfire cranking, a few vans around. There's the river just down there. And I have a feeling someone's gonna catch a barra tonight and I'm freaking hoping it's me because I've spent 200 bucks at the tackle shop. And uh, if I don't re recoup that value in barra, Sarah's gonna kick my ass. Oh, Derek, be careful. Oh my God. Yeah, this, you know what? Like, there's movement under this lilies, eh? <laughs> Are you on film? <laughs> you feel me? I reckon I'm gonna go down on my bum, eh? <laughs> that, Mark's got the first barra of the trip. A bit of chrome. Ooh. How good's that? That's what do you reckon? Good. He, he went a lure once and then the second, like a few casts later, he, he jumped it. Oh my God. Yeah. I know, I freaked down to go up to Bastard Point and one of the locals come down and said it's shut today so that's unfortunate we're not too sure why it's shut but change of plans we just come for a quick swim down the creek here this is right at um, Cow Power we found a nice little secluded waterhole pretty safe no crocs here so I'm gonna go grab the rod and uh, if I can't catch a bar there's got to be bar in here just looking at it now and look I'm not an expert but there's water in it and barra swim in water, so there might be a barra in there. So I'm gonna go grab the rod and um, have a crack. Now, 
No barra. Derek's been trying with a different colour popper. No, no barra. No barra. Well, do, no, barra, no barra that we can catch. Uh, the locals have told us get liveys in a, in a net and then um, chuck them on a hook and then and sort of float them out there and that's what the barrel like at the moment. But people keep saying the water's not quite warm enough yet as well. So, But saying that, Mark caught one last night. So, No barra, Sarah. No barra, but we got to swim. So that's one off the list. Check. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to camp. And some people we camped there last night, they were down at the end camp. And apparently they went out in the boat and they got heaps of barrel. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to camp. Derek's going to go for a drive down to the end, see if he can get his boat off easily, and we're going to get barrel. So we're on our way back to camp, but we can't go straight to camp, can we, Keelan? Surely there's barrel in here. There's water here. <laughs> So after a lot of deliberation with Derek, we finally convinced him to get the boat in. And because it is crocky, he's not that keen on testing it out and he's never put his boat in in crock waters. So me and um, Simon are out here trying having a crack, but there's not too much going on at the moment. We uh, have had a bit of success on poppers at the moment. We're just trawling. Got a gold bomber out the back. Haven't seen any snapping handbags yet, but I'm sure we will at some point. But yeah, hopefully we can get a barra. This is probably one of our best chances. They have been saying the water still needs to get a little bit warmer for them to properly be on, so it's slim pickings, but fingers crossed we can get one here. on the trip today. Our Lost Tribe Adventures have bursted their water tank. Rocks just ripped the fitting straight out. Can't really do much about that. No mud flap's gonna stop that. Um, yeah, unfortunately, that's the, that's the go when you're dealing with big bundies on the road.
we've just gotten to North Bend Campground. This one's just outside of Cohen and we have scored the most amazing campsite ever. It's right on the river. That's our camp there. Check it out. It is insane. And you can swim here because there's no crocodiles. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty <laughs> shallow. It's only bloody ankle deep and it's it's a good little um, you would have seen it. It was a good little river crossing getting across here. It was yeah. actually sand bottom, so you can get bogged in that river crossing. So everyone had to give it a bit to get through. <laughs> Um, I, I know of a few people that have got stuck. A little bit nerve wracking. We're yeah. only going to stay here the one night, but after making all of this effort to get in, we've decided that we're going to stay the two nights. Yeah, so. I think it's good. Yeah. There's not much better. Like, this is like a primo campsite, whatever, whatever state yeah. you're camping in. So. And all the kids are swimming because it's nice and calm. So yeah, it's been yeah. really good. I've got something really special for you guys planned. So normally on the channel, Sarah does most of the cooking. Yeah, um, for once. So tonight, <laughs> me and Derek, Derek from Just Fanning It, uh, have planned a little special surprise, mainly Derek. Because he's South African, he reckons he can make a really good barbecue. And because I'm Australian... He well, reckons he can make a good barbecue. But anyway, Derek's going to Derek's gonna take over this one tonight. He's talked a big talk. Um, let's see if he can cook a tomahawk steak. So It's our first time having tomahawk too. Yeah, so. we're treating ourselves on the yeah. cape. Here we go. We're getting this underway. Oh, you two lot. holding your rods. I love holding them. <laughs> My rod's bigger than yours. All right. Not all men are built built equally, guys. I'm gonna go and get those. This meat is gonna be so tender. <laughs> Shit. Oh no, this is bad. For some reason, Derek didn't want me to hold his rod, but <laughs> that is a tomahawk steak. So it's massive, and it's just at room temp. It's soon that'll be tenderized goodness. Hopefully Derek knows what he's talking about because not gonna lie, when I was paying 20, well, when we were paying 25 bucks for this steak, we've definitely felt like we were getting ripped off. Like we never, we're a bit stingy, me and Sarah. So we're lashing out tonight, but uh, Derek reckons he can cook a mean barbecue. So apparently we're in safe hands, but yeah, we'll see with Derek, you never know. So what do you reckon, Derek? You keen as mustard, mate? I'm excited, but I'm also nervous because I'm in charge of everyone's steak. And they're expensive too. They're not the cheapest yeah. steaks here. No. But you know what, but the problem is there's also no KFC around here, bro. Yeah, no KFC. No, so um, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I mess the steak up, we can't, I can't say, well, I'm just going to get everyone a takeaway. I'm going to go back inside and have a chat to myself and plan it out again to make sure that I don't, mate. But look at this already. That is... Mate, that's hey guys, going. Who's doing all the work here? Oh, I'm gonna do all the cooking. Yeah, Mark's actually done most of it, so. No, no. Yeah, let's have a look at your eyebrows. You got them lit. <laughs> so what are you applying there, Derek? So we're just going with a something simple because you know not everyone enjoys the same. Going with a simple salt and pepper and some mixed herbs. Beautiful. And Sue's gonna make up a beautiful garlic and rope um, parsley, um, like a butter, and then we're gonna melt it over the steaks as they cook. All right. Okay. All right, so we got all the tomahawks out on the table here. Derek's done a fantastic job just seasoning them up, but check it out. That is a steak. That's probably a good 70 mil. I mean, you can't get your meat much bigger than that, or it just won't cook. So what we've done is to handle the, the sheer weight, the sheer downward gravity weight, force equals mass times acceleration weight of these steaks, we've just drilled through the bone. And hopefully gravity isn't too strong and they actually stay on the hook and don't end up in the fire. Cause I tell you what, I'll be crying. So anyway, hopefully they taste good. And if not, we can just hang shit on Derek for pretty much the rest of time. Bye. 
All right, steak cam, typical South African style. They've picked the two biggest steaks, but this third meat is ours. And uh, Derek's dumped some rosemary in there, so hopefully we can taste it and it's not just all a bit of a uh, wank factor, but <laughs> we'll see. Have you ever wondered what a bad fisherman looks like? This is what it looks like. <laughs> if you can't catch a barra, you throw the meat on, which sucks, but that's gonna be. So we're about to try, the, oh my knickers are in it. So we're about to try the tomahawk steak. Cheers, all right. <laughs> oh, oh you, literally, you literally could be 99 years old with no teeth left because they rattled out on the Cape York trick. And, and the uh, smoky taste. And you can still get through that. That so is good. next level. We Derek, can't afford to eat this all the time. So nah, this is not good. Derek's done well. <laughs> If you mm. want to watch a good like channel like this, go watch Fighter Fork. He does it all the time. Thanks, <laughs> Fighter Fork, for the inspiration, mate. Living like king. Someone call Barry. Tell him we're living. <laughs> <laughs> this is living, Barry. This is Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you guys are enjoying the video. Uh, if you are, make sure you like and subscribe. It's the easiest way to support us and it keeps us on the road doing what we're doing today. So yeah, if you can, please do that for us. It means a lot. Plus, we're gonna be doing some subscribe. <laughs> Plus, we're gonna be doing a subscriber giveaway soon. So if you aren't subscribed, you're definitely gonna miss out. We've got some merch and we're gonna be flinging some shirts around. So get amongst that, subscribe, back to the video. All right, so we just got to the famous Bramwell Junction and this this place is like you step foot on the ground and you can just feel like it's iconic like the telly track literally starts like 50 meters away from my camping we've uh, set up a big circle here it's 30 bucks a night um, no reception but they give you a Wi-Fi card but um, check it out we've set up a big tribe circle admittedly the track did get a lot worse than I've been saying so before this, I was saying it's not too bad, but today it was actually really bad. So we actually did get um, a bit of dust, I reckon, inside the car, which isn't ideal, but no dust in the van, which is good. Um, you can see here, it's just caked on. Um, yeah, it's not ideal, but the van's still good, but I'm gonna dust out the dust suppression filter, the fan filter, just because I reckon it's not getting as much suction as when we started, so it'd just be full of dust. It's doing its job, the filter's there, it's doing its job, but. Yeah, you definitely want to keep on top of that so you don't get dust in the van. Um, so tomorrow the plan is to hit the telly track. Um, that should be a big day, do the south side and then grab the vans, take them up to Fruit Bat and then do the second half of the telly track. But yeah, like I said, it's just so iconic just being here. Like I've seen so many videos on YouTube about this joint and to be finally here, it just feels surreal. Um, especially being from WA. We're literally as far away as you can possibly get from WA. So it's pretty um, pretty cool to be here. Um, we're gonna get on the beers. Um, I'm gonna open the airbox up in a minute and I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. Um, just a standard Toyota filter. I haven't been running the Safari Ramhead um, red filter. So I'll show you what mine looks like and then I might go show you someone that's been running that little red filter and just have a look at the difference um, and see if it's worth you running it. Cause if you do run that, it does, sacrifice your fuel economy hugely but you're not going to dust your engine so let's pop the bonnet and have a look all right you can tell how hot the car got today we've literally been parked for about five minutes and it's still red hot even on the air box let's have a look in here hopefully there's no dust on the clean side of the engine well, 
that's looking pretty good. Right. Look at that. So the that's what you should be looking for. So that's the clean side. Um, there's a tiny bit of shit there, but I don't think that's actually dust. And then that's what the other side looks like. So that's probably, uh, that's brand new as well, right before the telly, uh, sorry, the Cape York trip. So yeah, you're definitely better off tapping these out. And we've also got a spare as well. So that's a bit of a tip I'll give you guys. Pack some spares, um, cause you'll definitely need them. So yeah, no Safari air sock thingy on the ram head. And that's sort of what it looks like. All right, we're over here with Derek now and uh, we're gonna check his filter out. He's been running one of those filter socks, but you can tell, look how dirty it is. Like that is like clogged up. So that'll be affecting his fuel economy, which it is, isn't it Derek? Yeah, we're getting around 30 yeah. liters to yeah, the 100. Yeah, we don't really need it. the fuel economy to be any worse, but anyway, let's pop it open. I haven't had a look. It should be really clean because the amount of dust well, is on that pre-filter. Well, you would think, you so, hey. Let's have a look. Now, I'm no mechanic, so. Derek, there's four clips, mate. Ah, oh, shit, that was my finger. Oh, let's have a little look, see, mate. So, we're hoping to see no dust on the clean oh, side. Oh, jeez. Look at that, she's white. Hang on a minute. Have you got a pre pre filter? I have no idea, mate. But... Oh, look. That's good. Is that good? Yeah. But do you think that's any different to yours? No, nah, it's probably no different, I reckon. So what I about the top of your airbox? Yeah, she's yeah, clean. Yeah. But the thing is, like, if yours is not any better, I might as well not run the sock. Yeah, well, I, I chase clean air, so I don't sit in anyone's dust. And then, yeah. thanks, Derek. No worries, mate. That's looking good. Yeah, so I reckon the tip I'd give everyone that doesn't want to run a filter and, well, a pre filter on their air um, is to sit in clean air and not ride someone's ass for 100Ks. Just back it off, sit in your own air, and you won't get any dust issues. So that's what I've done. And I haven't run anything all trip, and I'm still sitting on around 16 litres per 100, which is pretty good out here. Here we go, old telly track. This is where it starts, Bramwell Junction. You stay here for the night. You hopefully get a good night's sleep and hopefully not have bad dreams about gunshot and bloody Palm Creek, which I did last night. I didn't sleep that well last night, but we've got about seven cars in the convoy, a mix of V8s and four cylinders, all quite capable. Most are locked or winched, either one. However, humble Percy over here, we're running no lockers and no winch. So let's see how that goes with the least capable in the whole convoy. So can't wait to see Palm Creek and gunshot. Should we do it? I'm not too sure yet. We're gonna see uh, when we get there and we'll find out then. So stay tuned guys, let's hit the telly. Justice. It's like pretty steep. Like it's probably vert. It's almost vert. Like I'd I'd drop in on a on a skateboard, but yeah, maybe not the car. But check it out. It's pretty intimidating.
we found an entry point and an exit point. We think that's probably, well, it's not the easiest. I know there's an easy one, but everyone's going to commit to this one. Um, it is classed as a chicken track, but if anyone's watched any Cape York vids or been up this way this side of the year, there's no real chicken tracks this year. It's all pretty munted, so we're pretty happy with this one, um, and we're going to give it a crack. right at the lineup, entering into Palm Creek Chicken Truck, which isn't really a chicken truck. Um, a lady in an old Hilux has started the car in the tra traffic jam in the line, and a bloke has been between two cars and she started it in gear, and it's an old Lux, so it just went, it didn't stall, it just went and just pinched this guy in between two cars, and like he's broken, he's might have done spinal and he's got internal bleeding, so now, we just quickly evacuated everyone out. Um, this happened about half an hour ago, so the situation, I'm not just filming it as soon as it happens, like we've been waiting here for about an hour, but yeah, it's pretty gnarly. It just shows you like, you just gotta slow down and just take it easy, because everyone's on an adrenaline rush seeing these hard tracks, but yeah, it's just paramount that safety is key. And just, yeah, when I was talking it to the guy that got pinched five minutes before it happened, and at the time I didn't think, oh, you guys are gonna get hurt soon. You know, it just, it's just happened. And, yeah, so it's just gnarly, but they're getting the helicopter in now. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. It's just shocking. Like, it's just turned for the worse. It can't actually get too much worse than what's happened. So panel damage, whatever, nothing's as bad as this, you know, so. Yeah, it's a person being hurt. Yeah, it's yeah. just gnarly. Yeah. So we're all, like, personally, I don't even feel like driving the track anymore. Like, it's just taking it out of everyone. We um, quickly got a, everyone worked really well together, about 50 cars that were all on the tele track trying to hit it. Um, we got everyone out, you know, like it was a very smooth operation, everyone worked together, but yeah, we're just waiting for this helicopter to come lift him out, so it's just shocking. Yeah, we can't do anything about it, so we just gotta wait here and just think about it, which sucks, but yeah. Hopefully you know. you'll be alright. Yeah. Take two, we're back here at Bramwell. In last week's episode, there was a horrible accident on the old Telegraph track. A guy got pinned between two cars, had to get airlifted out with uh, suspected spinal and internal bleeding. So we've come back, we've reset, and this morning we are heading back off to tackle Palm Creek um, and do the first half of the telly. Percy is unlocked and unwinched, so open diffs, no winch, so it's gonna be a tough one today. Let's jump in and tackle the old telly. I can't bloody wait. First casualty of today, who's broken down? The bloody ram. I'm getting superstitious because yesterday we had trouble starting the tele track and now nearly at the exact same place something has gone wrong again. So should we be doing this? I'm stressing. Yeah, we should still do it. <laughs> Have you ever seen two tires pop at the same time? No, no, only in rams. <laughs> Must be a ram thing. Two, two front flats at the same time. Simon reckons he's just dropped them too long because he's running big 20 inch rims or 19s. Yeah, there's not too much sideball there, so it just shows you if you're running big rims, don't drop them too low. So we just went past that point where that guy had that really bad accident yesterday and you just feel like the, there's just energy in the dirt that's bad and you just feel crook. Everyone said the same thing, oh, I just feel sick going through this point, but we've made it to the Palm Creek entry and this is actually the chicken track, but definitely doesn't look like one. Um, yeah, and not to have a winch is pretty pretty gloomy for me, but we're gonna have a crack here. Everyone's pretty keen this morning to get this one out of the, the way um, and sort of forget about everything that happened yesterday. So hopefully we can recover and uh, today's gonna be a good day. So that's the entry. See Mark sliding down it. What do you reckon? Takes a piss, mate. So we're heading down that creek there and then out. So that's the exit there we're taking. There's a nice little winch tree at the top if we need it, if you have a winch. <laughs> Look at that, your feet get pretty pretty muddy, eh? It got chewed up yesterday. Oh my god, the Prado cannot. 
not do that. <laughs> All right, so we're getting in the car now. I'm about to tackle the entry. I'm feeling pretty nervous, to be honest. Uh, let's have a crack and see how the unlocked, unwinched Prado goes. That felt so good. Oh my God, I almost hit that tree at the top, but I like come up a bit too quick because I needed to punch up, no lockers, need that momentum. And then yeah, next minute, <laughs> I reckon I was like this close. Another skin of paint on my sliders and my scrubs, I would have bloody hit it. So yeah, no, I'm frothing that. That was, that was epic. Absolutely buzzing with that, the old cruiser. Here's the ram. Exciting. I'm sure Keelan was, it was more exciting for Keelan. Punch up, no lockers, need that momentum, and then yeah. Play up to the vault. Sorry, bro. You're right, bro. Yeah, mate. You were so bossy. Film crew. <laughs> Didn't make that one, but that's all right. Feel like a bit of a failure, but I think the poor Prado copped a bit of a beating under here. It's all, she's a few dents on the bash plates, which is probably what they're there for, but yeah, how good a fun is this, guys? I'm loving it. So Aaron's about to do an ego run, and these are the ones I like to call because he's got a land cruiser, he's got land cruiser brain. He just sees the mud pit and he has to do it. So let's have a look, see if he gets through. Uh, 
gazetted road because it was the old service line for the telegraph pole so if you have a look out here it's actually an old pole so this is what they used to run the, the lines on and it's still there obviously we've had a fair few bushfires since but yeah pretty cool stuff The exhaust pipe's gone. Daddy got a two and a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> so what's happening here? I'm about to do a little thing. <laughs> Creek crossing. <laughs> I'm about to do a little thing. I'm yeah. nervous. There was like a little bit of a drop in, but I don't know if Simon's ram just made it look a little bit more hectic because he's so big, but yeah, I'm nervous. Everyone's going to say this is so easy, but for me, this is yeah. big. <laughs> so I'm out of the car, Sarah's doing it herself, so let's see how she goes. She's trying to run me over. Maybe because I always try to run her over. All right, so there's a little drop here, but it should be sweet. I'll just make sure. All right, here we go. I'm going to try to direct her through without panel damage here. All right, you got your listening ears on? Slow, we're gonna feel a drop, so just go nice and slow. On the brake, on the brake, you're right. Yeah. On the brake, you're right. Slow, yep, you're right. Now just drive out. Too easy. That's all the fuss about. Yeah, the girl. Keep going. You're right. Slow. Easy. Woo! Percy lives another day. Is <laughs> that fun? Lots of fun. <laughs> Lots of fun? Were oh, you shitting yourself? A little bit. <laughs> to be honest, it never will look as bad, like as gnarly as it, it does in real life. The camera always plays tricks, but yeah, she's done extre extremely well there. Well done. <laughs> Track. We'd watched heaps and heaps of YouTube videos, obviously trying to prepare ourselves and know what we're getting ourselves into. And majority of the channels only show you all of the obstacles, which is fair enough because that's the best and like most exciting part. But there's actually a really, really pretty drive along here. Most of the obstacles are about 10 or 12 k's apart, and the drive is stunning. It's a really casual. No, not hard at all. Like anyone, you'd almost do it in the two wheel drive half of this stuff. Um, <laughs> So That's a yeah. bit of mayo, isn't it? Nah, but <laughs> yeah, and then you can choose your own line when you go through it too, which is cool. Yeah, so. it's really nice. And we're obviously doing it when it's a bit dry, so um, I think it would be a different story in the wet. But yeah, it's really pretty. So we just got to a little spot called Dalhunty Creek, and we're just going to stop up here for a bit of lunch. You got a sick waterfall up this end. Um, what a crack spot. Perfect distance from Bramwell as well to have lunch if you time it right. for lunch? Um, we've got <clears throat> leftover pasta and brown rice with avocado, tomato, feta and balsamic.
So after a beautiful little lunch next to the creek there, we finally made our way down to a spot called Gunshot. And I'm sure you've all heard of it. Uh, we haven't seen it yet. Let's go check it out, see what condition it's in this year. All right, so we're at Gunshot. I've just checked it. Just to, I might walk down and just show you guys, but it's just sheer straight up walls. Um, and it's, yeah, it's scary. It's like my heart is pounding just looking at it. I don't know what Sarah's thinking. I'll probably get my ass kicked. Right, I'll show you guys what it looks like from down here. That looks like a Prado CVA. So this is it. Hey guys. Are you gonna do it? Oh, here we go. I think you'll be sweet. You'll be sweet. You'll be sweet. Yeah, I'll be sweet. So I got a massive moral dilemma. Like we found a chicken track, but it's not really a chicken track. It's just as steep as gunshot. Um, it's just stressful trying to work out what line you want to go. I'll show you the line and let us know in the comments which way you'd go. But you've seen gunshot, and uh, we'll we'll show you this other line we've chosen now. But I'm still not sold, like it's pretty steep and it's off camber too, so yeah, have a look at this. about to hit it here and I'm low-key shitting myself. Um, we've got the peanut gallery out as well, about 30 people watching, so I'll cross over to Sarah now and see how we bloody go. La la la. Hope you guys are enjoying the video. If you are, make sure you like and subscribe. It's the easiest way to support us and it keeps us on the road doing what we're doing today. So get amongst that, subscribe, back to the video.
absolute spectacular day. We're all parked out the, the pretty much on the free, well, freeway, highway right now. <laughs> We're heading back to Bramwell. We've done 80 Ks on the tracks today, um, most of it in low range. And now we've got 120, so I'll loop around track on the bitchy and it's, yeah, 100 zone. So we should get home a bit quicker than Hopefully. it took us to get out of here, so. It's so late and we're all so hungry. So. That's not where the episode ends. Oh. Stick around, guys. Um, we've got plenty more in store for you. Call it a day, eh? Over. Mad day, though. <laughs> Decided to steal his fridge, smash his window, try to bust in and take his jerry cans as well. That's so really bad. bad. Yeah. Not so bad. His fridge is like, his fridge floor is empty, so it's obviously his. Unless he's taken it out. He could have, but why would you smash your own window? Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Oh, so Poor bloke. Packed up for the day, we've had our last decent shower and we're heading up to Fruit Bat Falls. We're gonna have a few days rest there, hang out by the falls, and then we're gonna go and tackle the rest of the northern part of the Telechuck. Um, we're very excited for it. I feel like we've done all of the hardest parts, like Palm Creek, shotgun, not that we did shotgun, but gunshot. Oh <laughs> boom! I'm such a pro pole driver. So we've done the PDR pretty much all the way past where we came from last night. We've gone past like three or four camper trailers. They've just absolutely rat shit. These corrugations are no joke. Um, pretty much Gibb River Road inspections. I'll get out and show you, but behind us is a classic example of everyone's doing the right thing. And sometimes that's not even enough. He's lost his whole independent trailing arm. Wheels come off the whole shoot match in the middle of the road. So we're here, we're just trying to control the situation because people are just ripping around the corners on the wrong side of the road sideways with vans and stuff on. It's an absolute circus at the moment. If you can't drive on your side of the road and keep your van straight, slow the heck down because it's just ridiculous how many times people were on our side of the road just then and we were almost getting taken out T-boned freaking head-ons. It happened about three times in 10 minutes. It's just ridiculous. So we'll get out, we'll try to help this guy. Um, it's all about sticking together out here. Um, and the team teamwork is key, so let's go have a look. Alright, so at the start of the trip we told you guys that we'd keep you updated with any issues that we had with the urban along the Cape York. So today we've got our first little issues. Um, I'll show you guys what's happened. So we left Bramwell, which is actually like the worst of the corrugations we've had. It was sort of really corrugated in sections, then it would go flat and then really corrugated. But inside our little aircon unit here has actually rattled out. So um, it's just a screw in fitting. Just, yeah, it screws back in so we can literally just like pop it back in, but it's not a huge issue. And then we had one of these little knobs again. Oh, that, did you find it? Yeah, I found it on the ground. All right. So because- That little knob yeah. just there on the thingy. Because we didn't tighten it up before we left, you know, you bring your windows in, you don't think to tighten them all up when you pull, to, pull them in. So that um, fell down, but it was just on the ground. So all in all, this van is doing really, really well and we're very impressed. Touch wood, we're gonna be fine. <laughs> so you guys would have seen, we showed you guys all the wrecks. So we saw two hybrids, two camper trailers, all broken on the way to here. So pretty much if you do get your caravan up here, like you're going pretty good. Um, a few of the people in the convoy have had some issues, um, some little issues and some major issues. So we we're very uh, prepared for that, but thank God we don't have anything with the Urban Armour Light. Um, yeah, everything is running smoothly so far, but we showed you the corrugations out on the main track. That is the PDR and that is just absolutely munted at the moment. No grade has hit that for a long time. So yeah, hopefully it gets better on the way up, but we've made our way to this little gravel pit. Um, this is where we're gonna stay for the next few nights and then trip out to Fruit Bat Falls. Today we are starting the northern part of the old telegraph track. So there's gonna be heaps and heaps of river crossings in this episode. So we're about to tackle this little creek. Um, it's not very deep, but it's technical on the way out. Rams are very wide and uh, I have a feeling someone's gonna scrape pretty hard here. Stop, 
Three grand camera or something yeah. like that. Three grand camera. Found Sarah. A beautiful little freshwater creek. Trust you to find a bloody rock pool in the middle of the jungle. <laughs> Sarah's the rock pool queen. No, no, I wish we had the drone up. I should be able to find a dolphin because I've been renowned to find some dolphins in my time. got to Sam's Creek um, there's a few different entries here but the best ones probably just here um, this little truck just went through so I think we'll have no issues at all even though I've just realized my ESP traction control is all not working because I've got a steering angle sensor fault fault codes on my dash which is fine I just don't have ESP and nothing to really um, drive the wheels so I'm pretty much an all-wheel drive at the moment um, yeah so but saying that this little truck just got through it shouldn't be too bad but there is a few little coconut holes here um, to navigate. We just got reports that Nolan's is pretty deep today, so we're gonna find that out at the end of the day if we can even cross it there. Um, I think she'll be well over the bonnet. Oh. <laughs> is there any crocodiles near Wes? No croc? We've got a bit of a delay, a truck sucked in a bit of air, so the best part about Cape York, normally everyone gets stuck on these little river crossings, so when you're waiting, you can do a bit of laundry like I am here. Just get that shirt nice and clean. Pretty nice little spot and there's a rope swing down there. I'm definitely all over that rope swing. That was a sick little swimming hole. This truck we've been waiting on that's been blocking the truck finally got the air out of his fuel line, so he's trying to get up the ruts now. Just but... as I put my bathers on, it's always away, isn't it? <laughs> more Chinese laundry, and then um, yeah, we'll hit the road again. Hopefully, it's um, a few more challenging ones coming up. We just got into Mistake Creek. Um, yeah, this one's a bit tougher. It's a really steep descent and it's really whoopy, like big ruts, so lifting wheels um, plus a really hard descent angle. And then to cap it all off, you've got to do a three-point turn in the creek. Um, as from Lost Tribe Adventures is about to hit it now, um, I'll show you. He's definitely gonna lift the wheel here. Oh, it's bloody steep. This one's gonna be fun to watch, I reckon. So this is the view from the driver's seat. You can see how steep it is. Like that's only probably like 20 meters ahead of us. It's like I'm looking down. It doesn't show it that well on the camera. The camera never does it justice. She's steep. Yeah, baby.
way, that's not my bomb, that's the exhaust. <laughs> Oh, that was sick. That's exactly why you come to Cape York. Big wheel lifts, um, big descents, and yeah, a nice little dip on the way down as well. It's pretty sick. I'm loving this joint. It's absolutely so much fun, especially with good people, you know, like people spotting you and stuff. It's just epic. Yo! I just got peppered by hornets. I sat in the trees to get a photo of Derek. I got bitten by a hornet on my head on my arms look at that hornet bites freaking everywhere i've never been done by a hornet and i just got done six times oh that's a deep hole <laughs> so we just got to the next free crossing and it's the, the iconic one where you almost have to do like a 90 degree hairpin turn. I've never seen it this bad in my whole life. Like I've watched thousands of videos on this place and the entry into this is freaking gnarly. Like every entry is gnarly this year. There's no chicken trap. It's gonna be fun. These tracks are the worst I've ever seen. We've been here twice before and there's been nothing like this. This is gnarly. You out. Down. Right. Down full this one. All right, stand back. Hit it.
I think it's time for Cypress Creek, which is the oldest, ricketiest, sketchiest bridge you've ever seen in your bloody life, so. We're rolling into Cypress Creek. This is the notorious log bridge that I was talking about before. Have a go at it. It looks like a two-year-old's put it together with a couple cable ties. And um, yeah, it's insane. Check that out. Ah, uh, the rest is just okay, right? That's just just okay, right? Yeah. Someone's had a good job of doing it up, to be honest. Oh. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, send the heaviest vehicle over. What do you reckon, Sue? Send the ram, bro. Send the ram. I don't know if, how many rams have been over this spot before, but I reckon it'd be top 10 ram. Literally see the logs flexing because it's just not used to that weight, I reckon. It's just obstacles on obstacles. We're not even at Nolan's yet. Look at this lunatic. We're not even at Nolan's yet, and then there's just this massive bog hole that I guess I didn't know about. No. Look at this. What a prancer. It's pretty deep. Brad and he's 79. Oh, reliable. It's gotta be Brad. Send him through. It's pretty deep. This is going to be fun. Slow it down a little. got to Nolan's that last creek crossing was bloody deep um, the tracks this year have just been like unruly they've probably never been as bad as they are now everyone's been telling us even the old dogs that have been coming here for like 40 years that have just been the worst uh, we've got right to the end of the northern part of the telly track and this is probably arguably one of the biggest challenges on the telly track and that's Nolan's it claims cars every year I've got a massive respect for this place um, and there's a massive audience here too the big the peanut gallery is out in force so let's go check it out, see how deep it is. We'll walk it a few times um, and see how we go. Thanks, love. Telling her to knock off once you get to Nolan's. <laughs> So at this point here, I was absolutely crapping myself. So not only were we in two-wheel drive because the EST and traction control wasn't working that actually makes these cars a four-wheel drive, but we're also following the biggest cars, the heaviest cars in the convoy. So two Rams went through before me. And if anyone knows Nolan's, normally the rule of thumb is four cars get through and the fifth gets bogged every single time. So I was absolutely crapping my DAX.
Don't do it. Don't do it. Happy days. <laughs> Welcome to Nolan's. Beer in hand oh, already. Shit. Cracked it already. I reckon, beer in hand. I reckon Keelan needs a beer. Well, we won't be going too, far, too quick, mate. Hey. What do you reckon, mate? Yeah. Just is what it is, mate. Just flooded me, my pride and joy. Just flooded it. I did a spiel before I hit Nolan's and I said, yeah. I've got a lot of respect for this place because it does take vehicles. It does. And I it. had a funny feeling because I was yelling at everyone, you got a shackle over there? Like, I was Oh, I was we're ready all ready for, for you. It's just, you know, in the moment, it's hard to get. But everyone's like, no revs, some revs. I was literally resting on the throttle and that was too yeah. much apparently. So what do you do? You just yeah. roll with the punches. You only can do what you do, mate. You've done well. That's We've got it out there. Hopefully, um, we'll get it air out for you. Like I said, Percy's done pretty well to do the cape trip without lockers, without a winch, without all these things that a lot of people just have from standard these days. So, in my eyes, Percy still was a winner. Um, like I did it with lithium batteries under bonnet as well. We're testing them out. Um, and yeah, stuff does happen and it just shows you. You just have to be prepared. The, the snatchy was on, quick throw out. We're probably only in the drink for about 25 seconds, I reckon, but that's definitely enough to get into my door seals. <laughs> Not the best on the old Toyotas, so got a fair bit of water inside there. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, it is what it is, and, and you can either take it like a champ or you can take it like an, you know an idiot and be and sulk around. But all wet through the car now, like the carpets need to be aired out. Um, lucky we are in one of the hottest places on, in Australia right now. Massive silver lining. I can just open the doors, get a bit of sunlight in there, and hopefully no mould. But we'll get her back on on the road, um, and hopefully our alternators are right because I've got a battery light as well. So double whammy there. If you do pity me a little bit, hit the subscribe button. Um, it's going to cost a bit to get this one fixed. Um, and yeah, your support goes a long way. So if you want to subscribe, please consider doing it. Sorry, the episode's not finished yet. The car's conked out and it's not starting. So stay with us. We might get it fixed. We might not. We're up at the Cape, remember? <laughs> There's that towing sign over there. What's the towing number sign? <laughs> Finding a method? Get the air blower Get the blower out. Get the blower on it, bro. Yeah, I'm turn like them the... off because it'll drain the battery. Yeah, they're, off. they're off. No, they're flicking, man. High beams. <coughs> um, yeah. Case yeah. that's got water in it. Yeah, it was. Yeah. 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 So the main plug in there, that's where all the water was and I reckon it's just a bit wet. Do you want to show them that? So if you do have a Prado, just be aware. I'm no auto sparky, but that looks like it shouldn't be wet. We love you, Percy! Oh no! No! Just conked out. Never celebrate early, kids. <laughs> Come on, Percy. Give her a kiss. 
so we got the Prado started. Um, it was an easier fix than we thought. We're just trying to get out of this freaking bog hole now and it's night time. Um, and we're gonna have to winch and stuff. It's it's gonna be a massive, massive haul out of the yard. So yeah, when, it's not over yet. So stick in there with us guys. So that's not where the adventure ends though. We got Percy back on the road, back on the track running. But after that, everyone was a bit frazzled and it was getting late, so everyone was rushing and Danny and Emma almost flipped their Y62 patrol. They actually drove off the track into a big gutter that was about shoulder heist, almost in slow motion, and we saw the whole thing unfold. End up in the hole. almost had a near miss with um, Danny and Emma. They like didn't see a big ditch and they drove into it. Um, this is after like I flooded the car and everyone's just like got get me home syndrome, which is like pretty dangerous. But now we've got no really electrics in the car. We got it started, um, we're cruising out, but we got no light. So I've got Derek behind me just shining a big light. It's still ruddy, as well. we're still on the old telly. So it's like pretty hairy. You can imagine at night, one of the toughest roads you can drive in Australia all drive wise and yeah we got no lights or anything so we're just trying not to have any more you know accidents just like taking our time and stuff but it's pretty hairy at the moment hear that Derek so if I just go black all of a sudden just hit the brakes the PDR, so the Peninsula Development Road. This is the one that's really corrugated. You see heads still broken down. So I've lost all my lights because I've got a, 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 a blown alternator. Um, so yeah, all the lights on my dash are up and the corrugations are just next level. So yeah, it's it's insane at the moment. I've got Derek from just banning it right at Mars. He's putting his high beams on so I can see. And then Danny and Emma are just lighting the way in front of me and I'm just cruising on these corrugations in the dust, trying to follow the same light as them. Um, you don't want to fall off into the tail drain either. Um, the window's down because we can't use the defogger or the aircon because it's not, none of it's working. So to keep the window nice and clean, I'm just, I'm just sucking in all this dust. Shit is just not going to plan today. It's just, yeah, it's not going our way, but that's all right. We're, um, we're almost home. If we can get Percy back in one piece um, and do some repairs tomorrow, hopefully in the gravel pit. So yeah, hopefully we can get back. Look at the Christmas tree on the dash. <laughs> We're losing everything now. I'm losing Speedo, Taco, bloody everything inside. It's just dying. It's just gonna conk out and just stop on me. I don't know if what happens when you fully run out of charge. We limped Percy back to camp. Uh, we're staying at their gravel pit like you guys saw. So the issue with Percy last night, I'm gonna show you the damage. So we've removed all the trims and yeah, we're airing out the carpet. Um, she's still pretty wet though, like underneath through there. Um, so I'm just gonna get these rags and soak it up. Um, my alternator has carked it. So, so the alternator's not putting any charge into the battery. So that's not good. So I've just got the panel out and I'm boosting the battery myself through the PWM. So that's working a treat. In terms of the electrics, the electrics are all fine um, from what I believe. Uh, we are getting a few fault codes like ABS and stuff, but I think that's like to do with the alternator not putting any charge into the battery and it dropping below nine volt. So yeah, it's, it's all systems go here. We're trying to get Percy back on the road. Obviously we're up pretty remote Cape York, so it's not the best place to get stuck just gonna let her dry out today it's definitely a sad day for percy um it's definitely not ideal and it's definitely not why you come to cape york but it is a cracker story pretty happy to be sharing it with you guys yeah hopefully we can get it back on the road soon We've been 
rushed outside because there's a massive bush bushfire coming our way. We're in the middle, surrounded by trees, the wind's coming our way, so everyone's quickly trying to pack up, get the vans ready so that if we need to, we can just get out of here. But seriously, what the hell is going on? Cape York has got some seriously bad juju. Like, I'm never coming to this place again. This is very scary. setups um mark's just mark's a fiery so we're in safe hands with mark um but he reckons it's um it's a, not a massive fire but it's only 400 meters up the road and the wind is heading directly for us so i think it was smart what we did we did move the vans um we've got them all parked out here everyone's hooked up ready to go just in case we we have had ash fall on us and stuff like that and burning embers and shit so yeah, it is pretty hairy at the moment, but we're trying to stay positive. The last few days has been someone with got crushed between two cars at the start of the telly track, drowned our car yesterday. We've now got a fire. Like, it's just not going right for us, is it, Sarah? Done. <laughs> trying to stay positive. <laughs> this is traveling, um, and we're showing you guys the good and the bad. Anyway, Percy's drying out nicely. If anything, that fire's just heated up the ambient in the air a bit. And uh, yeah, she's heating her up just nice. Getting rid of all the moisture in there. Still drying out that ECU plugs. We've got the jumper jumper cables ready to go just in case the fire comes. We can jump the car and get out of here. So happy days. So we've dodged the fire and we've made our way down to Fruit Bat Falls. We're gonna have a nice little swim and shake off the hot day that we've had, but very excited to see this spot. You wanna come back here at night, Keel? The knife. Wow, that's pretty shit for the smoke, doesn't it? <laughs> cool, this spot, we finally made it down to Fruit Bat. Um, it's incredible, the smoke is giving it some like spooky vibe today. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool to be here. I've seen it on telly so many times, um, and I'm pinching myself to finally be here. We are stinking hot, I'm gonna jump in the drink to cool off a bit. down from Fruit Bat Falls and we're down at Elliot Falls now. It is absolutely beautiful. It's more of like a U-shaped waterfall rather than one long waterfall. It's really cool, it's super unique. So we're gonna head in here, have a little swim and enjoy the morning. Are you gonna jump off the rocks? Maybe. <laughs> I've been hanging out to see these plants they actually catch the water so they'll open their lid they're sort of like a venus flytrap they'll open their lid catch the water it goes down into this little tube here and they store water in there so cool i forgot the name of it but i took a photo so i'll be able to uh, thing down the bottom so a couple days ago i actually flooded the car the alternator inherently got buggered up by that um, it's really low hanging fruit get ourselves out of trouble um, we do have a big battery system in the caravan so what i'm about to do because we aren't charging the battery our cranking battery in percy the prado i'm going to actually reverse 
how the DC to DC charger works. Normally the car charges the van. However, I'm gonna reverse this on the DC to DC charger. So our 500 amp hours of lithium in the van actually charges the cranking battery in the car. So when I'm driving, I'm actually not losing power and I'm just trickle charging that cranking battery, keeping us going. Cause we got to get on a ferry um, and hopefully the ferry guy doesn't tell me to turn the car off because I'm going to tell him to get stuffed because if we turn it off we're buggered so pretty much very very simply um, instead of having the input side coming from the car I'm going to switch that to the output side and then obviously vice versa with the uh, the caravan as well so pretty well input's going to be coming from the lithium batteries and the output is going to be through the Anderson plug and to the cranking battery on the car so the car's going to think that the alternator is working because it's getting charged it's getting voltage however it's coming from the dc to dc charger so all i have to do is just swap two cables around so we've hooked it up we've connected it back all up set that to 15 amps because i reckon it would be about 15 amps with the accessories and stuff so hopefully that gets us out of trouble we've got 400 amp hours in here and like i said we've now reversed it this is full bush mechanics and in 15 amps which is enough to hopefully run the car and that's coming straight off the solar as well which is good so um yeah hopefully that gets us through we're going to jump on the in the car now and hopefully get to jardine we'll let you guys know if we get stuck <laughs> so he's made it we're at the jardine ferry it costs 175 bucks but it also includes camping permits, camping permits. yeah so it's actually probably not bad price especially if you stay up here for a few few weeks yeah um but it's literally only a 50 meter span across the ferry. It's sort of like the Tiwa ferry, but um, how yeah. many times more expensive? Obviously. But we are remote um, and that's fair enough, but we are having still got alternator issues. Battery light um, coming up on the dash. It, it comes off and on. So I reckon one of the windings is partially shorted in my alternator, that's fine. Hopefully we can get a spare part over the other side. Bang the drone up now, along you'll see what $175 return looks like. <laughs> job. He's the biggest ferry driver ever. He's so good. Yeah. He goes, no, no, you gotta wait two hours. We're like, but all our friends are there. And he's like, no, no. And then he yeah, just randomly let us on. <laughs> So we finally got into Mooti Beach. Um, almost got bold getting in. You would have seen that. Like, Mooti Beach. Is it Mooti? Spot. We've been hanging out to get to the Cape and the ocean, the coastal side of the Cape. We've just done all inland stuff so far. Really good news. Um, we found an alternator. Georgie, the lady we're traveling with, she rang her cousin's brother's dog's uncle's missus dog and found an alternator in Seisha. So we've actually got that alternator. We're picking it up tomorrow. Um, I'll turn the car off for now so she's not starting again, let's face it. Um, we've run the caravan batteries flat, trying to power the car through the DC to DC charger. That's fine, it's done a, done its job. Um, we crossed the ferry um, and it's pretty much proven that it can work. You can reverse speed your DC to DC charger to mimic an alternator so your car keeps running because as soon as your voltage on your battery drops below, below like six volts, the car's pretty much just gonna turn off. The ECU will turn off if it's got no power to go to it. So it got us here. Tomorrow we'll jump it and get out of here, but 
check it out. It's just a mint spot. We have flat batteries on the van, but I'm stoked because we're one, we're getting the car fixed, and two, it's time to go fishing. So we're gonna get the rod. I've heard there's a few big queenies out the back here. I'm gonna throw a few slices around and fingers crossed we can get Sarah onto one. So it's gonna be super good. Um, I'm pumped. Come right down to the tip. Apparently people have been catching fish here. Someone said a local caught a barra yesterday, so now Keelan's ears have perked up, but it is so windy, hence why I'm crouching behind the rock. I reckon we have like a massive front coming towards us. It looks just black out there, but fingers crossed, we catch a fish before that comes. Are you changing your lure? Well, I haven't had much luck on the silver slice yet, and I reckon some bloke reckons you can get barra here, so if I catch my first <laughs> barra, I've got barra fever still. I need a barra. Good morning guys, so we've woken up. It's a new day here on Munti Beach. So I've been saying it wrong. I know that's pretty standard for us. Because we ran the, the van, when we re reversed the polarity of the DC to DC charger, so the van was actually charging the car yesterday. We're pulling about 30 amps off at every hour. Um, and we transitioned from where camping yesterday over the ferry to where we are now. It took around four hours, um, the car running, and we couldn't turn it off because obviously the alternator is buggered. So, Inherently, we've run the batteries flat on the, the van today, um, so that's a bit of fun because we've got a flat van um, and a flat car. So what we've done is we've, uh, we'd, we've got a donor alternator off the patrol here. We're jumping it straight onto the Prado, hopefully getting a bit of juice straight into the Prado. Hopefully we can turn it over, but we're also running the power lead from Danny's inverter in the back of the patrol into the van so we're actually taking his power off the off the bonnet bay and obviously off his back as well off his inverter he is the donor vehicle at the moment we are getting an alternator today which is epic news 475 bucks which is a bargain so we're going to try bang that in today and even better we will be at a caravan park tonight so um loyalty beach is right up the tip past seisha and uh that's where we'll be camping tonight so all we have to do is get the percy the prada and keith there um, fit the new alternator and hopefully all should be good but we've woken up it's a cracker morning um, despite all this happening I'm still very positive Sarah's still very positive um, it's been a cracker trip some of the coolest coolest memories um, some really cool stories to tell from this one so we've just rolled into Loyalty Beach we are here for a few days so we're very keen to just park up and relax we're right near the beach it's so beautiful we've gotten an alternator Clip on the back. Yeah. Yeah, should be alright. I'm getting it. Just need a new battery. That side's alright. That side's pretty much there. Try that side. It's been more. Tiny bit. I reckon just make it flat. <laughs> All right, so quick update. Sorry, I'm eating a fritter. <laughs> <laughs> we got the alternator in, so it just fed me a fitter. But um, it's a fair mission. I got WD-40 my eye. That's not stopping us. But um, yeah, it's the right part. So we're, we're halfway there. Aaron's just sort of. I'm just in the wheel arch. Aaron's sort of doing everything up that I can't reach, and I'm holding it through here. Yeah. Because alternators are surprisingly heavy, um, if I'm fair. This is not a good angle of me. <laughs> but um, she's almost... If we can get this right, it'll be trip changing for us. We'll be actually able to charge the van and um, yeah, maybe even run the aircon. We'll see. But um, yeah, we're pretty dirty. I'm probably full of ticks as well, full of rue ticks. So I might need a doctor's appointment after this as well. So anyway... There's your update. So we finally got the alternator in. Percy's running probably better than it has all trip. Um, I've done a quick air clean um, on the filter. Just tapped it out and then blew it out with a bit of compressed air. So 
fingers crossed that can get us through um, and get us off the cape. So tomorrow's plan, we have something super special, but I think that's gonna be in a different episode. Percy, like I said, is running good. And uh, that's a massive relief because you, you're stranded pretty much up here. The new alternator was 450, so that's not too bad. I think thought that was pretty good for Cape York pricing. So yeah, thank God it's all in. We had some really good help from the other families here um, and it was light work, so I'm filthy now. It's probably time to go have a shower and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Wharf, and we don't know how to use the cast net and you bloody believe it, we've, we've lucked out. We've caught about a thousand fish. Check this out. That's sick. <laughs> Loose, there's guardies busting up, massive sharks. But uh, check out that bait ball just there. I don't know if you guys can see that. That's what we threw the cast net on, and I don't think you can actually miss, but we hadn't got one. We tried about a thousand times before this, so we're just frothing. Let's get these on a hook and see what we can catch. What I did then was put a sinker on it and get it down a little bit. All right, so no fish this morning. Uh, me and Aaron tried really hard. We got a big um, net of bait. That was pretty cool. I've never thrown a cast net and actually been successful. That's, that was pretty sick. So it's a bit later on the day. Um, Derek has just pulled his boat off the roof. Um, that is an absolute treat when that happens. We're about 100 meters away from the water and apparently there's fish everywhere out here. Spanish max fish. There's just so many and apparently you don't even have to be any good to catch one. So anyway, we're going to get out there, um, see what we can catch. All right, so Derek's just told us that he hasn't driven his boat since Kangaroo Island. We have been through three different states since then so yeah i'm feeling really confident considering we're in water rocks <laughs> but yeah we caught them liveies this morning you guys saw us getting them at the, the bloody jetty there but they're deadies now they're definitely not liveies so we're gonna go flick a few of them around trawl around we're right at the tip of australia so surely we can pick up some sort of fish species most of them have teeth up here so let's get out there and see what we can get It's a little GT. GT again. Wow. Yeah, that's just recent too. Oh. Yeah, So you're probably wondering, did me and Sarah even have a line in the water? Derek was pulling fish out left, right and center. I've never seen someone pull fish out of the ocean as quick as Derek did this day. We had no chance at all. But what happens next, I still can't get my head around. Yeah, good fish, Derek. Oh, 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 oh look at that. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> what is going on? Bring it in, Keelan. Oh, you, you lost it. As Derek was pulling in his final fish, I literally was hanging my lure off the side of the boat. It wasn't even in the water. And a massive wolf herring jumped out of the water, grabbed my lure, and away she went. I was on. That's one of them bloody 155 fish, bro. What the hell? Jesus, look at the size of it. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it didn't even hit the water, holy <laughs> shit. Oh, dearly, what is going on? Alright, these got teeth, so we got to Yeah, we got to watch He's that. Yeah, where are those long flies, just bro? Wait, just wait, just wait. He's already out. Oh, is he out? We know that they... Look at the teeth on it, oh. man. Look at those chompers. Holy shit, what is that? Oh. That's what Mark called, I think. That, that, yeah. that, that thing just took it off the top, bro. Get rid of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was sick. Wow, look at that sunset too. Woo, sunset on the tip. <laughs> All right, so we've just popped down to the kiosk to film our friends Danny and Emma go on their helicopter ride. And you would not read about it. Oh. They've got spare seats on the helicopter and they're gonna pay the same price either way. So they'll like jump in, come with us. So we're jumping in the helicopter with Darrell. We've never been on a helicopter before. So this is our very first helicopter. It's got no doors on it. So I'm a little we've, bit nervous. Yeah, we've always thought it was too expensive, but yeah, yeah what, what an opportunity. Like We're not gonna say no to that one. I don't think many people would. Yeah, actually, before we came, we had so many people messaging us saying, if you guys can afford it, do the tip on the helicopter. It's the most amazing thing ever. So like, we actually can't believe that we're actually doing Hopefully it. Hopefully <laughs> we see a few crocs too. So that's gonna be my big one, but we're shitting ourselves. Only been in planes before. So let's get up in the air and let's go tip, check out the tip of the, uh, Let's get up in the air and go check out the tip of Australia. One time too many, wonder what will happen next. We both know that this ship's going down. Let's get up and leave before we drown. There's nothing left for us to say. So today we've just woken up. I've got a super special day planned for you guys. We're going to a spot called Thursday Island. It makes up part of the Torres Strait. The only way to get there is from ferry or the sky. And the ferry actually leaves from Seisha here. So the very tip of Queensland. So we've paid for it. We're gonna jump on the ferry. We've got a tour booked over there, a private tour. Um, it should be a crack of day. We're gonna learn about Thursday Island, the Torres Straits. They've got a lot of interesting history and a lot of war history too. Um, and stuff that used to happen back in the day that'll blow your mind. We're gonna attack it today, bring you guys with us. Um, it should be a crack of day. Hopefully get to see the most Northern pub in Australia, which is the Torres Strait, Thursday Island. So let's get into it. Uh, yeah, it becomes a pearl. There you go. One in a barrel, apparently two to three thousand shell will have them. Put them all together. Try again. I'll look after you. So like most things, uh, history starts in cemeteries. All the white posts you see are actually just Japanese pearl divers. They don't know who they are. They just know that they're Japanese pearl divers. So a lot of the graves here, we don't actually know who's buried in this cemetery, but the pearl divers are actually represented with a just a standard wooden post. Um, and then all the people that are recognised, Torres Strait Island locals, are all represented by tombstones, like proper tombstones and stuff. So it's pretty sad to think that a lot of these pearl divers died 
and they still don't know who's in this cemetery. So yeah, it's pretty cool to hear about, but also pretty sad as well. Main cause of death for most of the Japanese pearl divers was the bends. So that's when you take a breath um, underwater off an oxygen tank, and then that breath down low is different to what it is up high. Um, it pretty much pressurizes the whole body in a nutshell, and you can get really sick, your joints pop, um, and a lot of byproducts happen from that. And that's actually why most of these pearl divers died, because they were trying to dive deeper and deeper as they outfish the shallower regions. So yeah, plus having to fight off crocs and tiger sharks, Irrigangis, um, the whole shooting match. It was pretty treacherous working back in the day as a pearl diver. And yeah, hats off to them because I definitely couldn't do it. Torres Strait Islanders actually didn't recognise themselves as like a collective group or a like nation until European settlement, which is really interesting. But before the Europeans came here, their main use of weapon was the spear and the boomerang. So they'd use that for um, pretty much payback revenge and literally all of their warfare was through these weapons. It wasn't until the Europeans came that they brought the guns and explosives. But this is their um, costumes that they used to wear. Imagine that running at you. <laughs> that scary as. And it's right on that hill that this was taken, obviously with the islands. Um, and you got Wednesday Island in the background there, so that's pretty cool. And it was, they would kill any foreigners or strangers to the area, so people who arrived by sea were killed or beheaded with these weapons. It's Doesn't matter if you're a good, good bloke, they'd, yeah, they'd kill handy. you. So this whole bunker was set up to um, defend against the Russians because there was a real Russian threat. Um, and they were actually using the big cannons on the roof to fire, um, to test fire and target practice um, at Wednesday Island. So that's, they obviously thought that it was a real threat and it was actually going to happen. Um, and this is actually where all the um, ammunition was stored. When you were bad, you were actually locked up right next to the ammunition um, shelter. So if a bomb did hit us, um, all the prisoners would have died. That's punishment. Just thinking about that just gives me shivers. Sitting next to a bomb, just waiting for something to come over your head and blow you up. It's just insane. But yeah, if these walls could talk, um, so interesting. A change of plans, we were meant to go to Horn Island, which is the neighbour of Thursday Island, but there's a wedding happening and uh, the ferries go across are uh, not available today because everyone's getting ferried to and from. So we've ended up at the pub, which is good with us because um, we are dead set hungry. But there should be a good feed here and uh, maybe a few pots of beer if we're lucky. So yeah, so we're not going to Horn Island anymore. Um, we just did Thursday today and we're going to head back to Cape York very soon. But so cool to get over to the Torres Straits. Um, definitely come over and have a look. Just don't come on a wedding day. Trip will get cancelled. Bloody beautiful day on Thursday Island. It doesn't get much better than this. As you can see, the sun's out, the wind's down. Probably going to go put the tinny in, go for a fish, you know. Let's go. <laughs> back from the tour yesterday uh, it was a nice tour but we definitely wanted to see horn but we'll be back to see that um, it's just we'll unlucky be. for us well maybe you can come back to Cape York I'm not <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we'll see it one day I'm sure but Torres Straits was sick we were only 50 nautical miles off Papua New Guinea or something like that anyway so it's pretty it's cool 89, wasn't it? I don't know anyway <laughs> doesn't matter but uh yeah we're in the back of a different car today and you can probably know what car it is after you just hear the sound of it we're in the back of the y62 because we just put a new alternator in percy and we weren't chancing it again on a few more river crossings up to the tip so that's where we're going today we're going to the tip of australia um, percy's not making it 
as <laughs> as far as you can literally get north and uh yeah we're pretty close to Papua New Guinea still and you can you can definitely tell we're in a rainforest right now but um yeah we thought we'd let you guys know why we're not riding in Perth and uh we're in the patrol so we're getting treated today we've got the fishing rods so hopefully we can catch a fish um, but I know one thing for sure, we're getting a bloody photo of that sign. And I'm going to kiss the thing because Cape York has been absolutely brutal this year. So, uh, so we're at the croc tent. This one's a must do if you come to Cape York. It's right on the tip. Come in here, spend a bit of money. Um, you might not ever wear the shirt again, but I guarantee you're going to get a laugh out of this joint. So let's go in and have a look what they've got to offer. Yeah. Don't take that line right there or you'll bog your car. <laughs> and then look what sticker Sarah got me. Got him a present. How do you feel? You've made it to the tip. Mate, it feels good. It tastes sweeter than the sweetest Fanta slash fire engine you've ever ordered at the pub, Brad. It tastes that good. Just to be at this little sign, it means so much when you come so far and you break so much shit on your car. It just means the world. I mean, what do you reckon, Sarah? Pretty happy. Yeah. Pretty happy to finally be here. Would you say that it's not about the destination, it's more about the journey and the people you meet along the way? Yeah. I would say that if I wasn't a full on cliche hipster, but yes, it is about the journey and not too much about the destination. So I couldn't thank everyone enough that helped us get here. Um, everyone that's helped us with maintenance, keeping Percy running with the alternator. I'm gonna wrap this up. Yeah, I'd like to thank a big line waiting. I'd like to thank my mum, my dad, my footy coach, Steve. That's our Steve. Um, just the whole shooting match. Yeah, thanks for having us and um, we'll be back. What about oh, Buck? Yeah. 